Uh, hi, welcome everyone. I see uh, a lot of people and a lot of attendees are currently joining. So welcome all. Let's give one or two minutes, one minute uh, for everyone to, to finish uh, joining the session. I hope uh, you can all see my screen right now with the cover. Um, so welcome to this webinar where uh, five smart and sustainable energy projects, so what, embers, incubis, races and sparks will be talking about waste uh, heat recovery and energy, energy cooperation in european industries so we have these five sister initiatives that have been funded funded under the european union's uh, horizon 2020 research and innovation program and they will be presenting their work on industrial waste heat and cold recovery the tools that they are developing to empower it and potential synergies between industri industrial parks and the surrounding community so this is the agenda well first of all as well uh please uh, be aware that this session is being recorded uh, we will be sharing with you all the recording of the session uh, as a follow-up uh, during the days after uh, this session is completed uh, this is an interactive session so we would really appreciate uh, your participation we want to hear from you and we want to we want you to be active so please use the chat function to enter your questions. Uh, the microphones uh, for attendees are off, but please, any concern, any question, any comment, use the chat and we will be really glad to, to help you all uh, uh, answer these questions or concerns. Uh, just for you to also be aware, if there is any question we cannot reply during the session, we will be uh, replying to those during the follow-up, also together with the recording of the session. And then let's go for the agenda of today. I hope everyone has joined by now. Uh, so this is the agenda that we will follow. We will have this brief introduction and then I will be handing over to my colleague Francesco Pecianti from Rina Consulting. He's the project coordinator of So What and he was the one uh, organizing uh, this webinar. Then uh, we will have Eric Lecomte, a policy officer at the European Commission, who will be providing an overview on waste heat and its importance. After that, we will have the Cooperation and Industrial Parks session, where we will have Andrea Coleman from the Energy Institute of the Johannes Kepler University Linz, in representation of the XParks project. We will have Georgos Tsalkias from IDIS Technology Solutions, representing Incubis. And we will also have Peter Verboven from Condugo, in representation of RACES. And then Francesco will be also, uh, I have already introduced him, he will be moderating this session as well. He will be mainly the moderator throughout the entire webinar. Then uh, the next session will be Tools to Empower Waste Heat Recovery. And this one will count with the participation of Nick Purshaus from Integrated Environmental Solutions, representing the SOWOT project. We will also have Lola Minar from Fundación Circe, representing Sparks, and Senaida Morau, from the Portuguese Institute of Science and Innovation in Mechanical and Industrial Engineering. She is representing Embers. And then last but not least, uh, Francesco will present uh, some of the conclusions of this session, and then we will have an opening for questions. This said, I would like to remind you again that you can write your questions on the chat anytime, and we will try to reply them. And those which we don't manage, uh, we will be sending you the answer in the follow-up of this session together with the recording. And now uh, we would like to see who is connected, get some uh, brief information about you. So Francesco, uh, please, uh, you can launch the poll. So uh, we would like to know which kind of organization uh, are you coming from? You may come from the industry, you may be part of a public body, you may be an ESCO or a consulting company, you may be uh, from a research institution, or maybe you are not any of these. You may be an st a student or just uh, from some other type of stakeholder. In this case, please uh, click other. Okay, I will share the results. I can see there is uh, quite uh, well distributed. This is uh, Francesco speaking. Uh, I can see a, lot, a 
good amount of research uh, researchers probably uh, and uh, the, all the other categories are well represented and uh, glide of it and uh, well now i will just uh, present uh, you uh, some uh, introductory slides and uh, uh, i will be then going to share my screen okay you should be able to see it uh, i would ask the other presenter just to close their camera to improve uh, our connection so uh, today we are going to as uh, anna presented there, there are five projects represented today all of them are h2020 funded project and all of us uh, we are tackling the challenges of uh, waste heat and energy cooperation. Then we are we are glad that uh, Eric Lecomte from the European Commission is here as uh, a big part of all this project uh, to present uh, why we are doing this and uh, also uh, the challenges and uh, some uh, overview of the next years from the European Commission perspective. But uh, why are we talking about uh, all this? Basically, uh, I would say that. Uh, uh, now we are uh, we are dealing with environmental uh, issues all over the world, and uh, air pollution is the major cause of premature death and disease, uh, and the single largest environmental health risk in uh, Europe. This is from uh, the European Environmental Agency. So now we are all of us dealing with the uh, coronavirus pandemic, all the restriction related to that but uh, the, the air pollution is uh, quite a, a big problem for all of us and uh, even though the modern society as we know it is uh, is based on uh, fossil fuel fossil fuel uh, thanks to the industrial revolution and uh, they they played the biggest part probably for where we are now uh, now we are phasing out of them uh, we should do it uh, we see that uh, the, the part per million of carbon dioxide in our atmospheres uh, are the highest point in the last uh, 1800,000 years. We are not sure what does it mean. It's uh, somehow controversial uh, how much is uh, human related and uh, which will be the impact. But uh, this is something very relevant and we know that fossil fuel contributed uh, in large parts to it. And uh, indeed, even though we, when we think about uh, pollution or pollution, we might think to some uh, cities uh, in China uh, or something uh, or some other uh, highly uh, industrialized areas. Uh, it is notable that uh, us as uh, Europeans, uh, probably there is uh, someone not from Europe today, I don't know actually, but uh, we are not, we are well exposed to our pollution. We can see in this. Uh, image from uh, the World Health Organization that uh, more than uh, a large percentage of us is exposed to air pollution uh, and uh, somehow exceeding the EU limit or target, target values or the strict uh, guidelines of the World Health Organization. Uh, that said, uh, energy still represents uh, the, the backbone of our life and uh, a large cost for energy intensive industries. Today, uh, the focus will be mainly, but not only on the industrial part. Uh, and uh, in, of this energy, which is a cost uh, for the environment and uh, for the pocket, a large amount is lost in the form of waste, uh, which uh, a part of it at least can be recovered. How it is uh, something you will uh, probably see, you probably know already, but you will see in the next uh, hour or so. Uh, in this sense, uh, we can improve our uh, performances in, uh, in the industries and uh, in the communities based on uh, uh, energy efficiency, which is part of waste heat recovery, and therefore cut our CO2 reduction, uh, CO2 emissions. And in this sense, uh, not uh, less important, uh, what we can also obtain is uh, to increase our competitiveness in uh, this moment, which is uh, quite difficult for the industry uh, around the world. 
That said, uh, I hope uh, you will find uh, this uh, this uh, webinar interesting. You will see that uh, these projects are someone uh, already started from a while, so, some other just started, and uh, we are working on collaborating. Uh, and uh, we hope that uh, you will find everything interesting. Now I am heading over to Eric uh, Lacomte. It's, uh, he is a policy officer for the European Commission and uh, he is in charge of several files uh, from industrial energy efficiency and uh, transition to carbon neutrality uh, over the top. So Eric, thank you very much for joining us today and the floor is yours. You should be able to share the screen. Okay, good morning, everyone. So I will share my screen. And uh, well, can you see uh, a presentation appearing? Yes, I do. Yes, okay, all right. So uh, it's, it's a pleasure for me to to, to, to talk a bit uh, to you about the uh, energy policies and uh, in particular, to which extent they have an impact uh, on uh, waste heat recovery, or maybe better said, how waste, waste heat recovery can contribute to the uh, EU energy uh, policies. And uh, so you certainly have heard about the high ambition that was announced recently to uh, at, at medium term, so by 2030, to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions by 55%. And uh, yeah, maybe I have to. So, excuse me, because I, I thought that you didn't see the complete screen, but what have I done now? Um, we can see the presentation well now, I believe. Okay, all right. I, I can't see it anymore. <laughs> I've lost it somehow. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's a bit. I can see. We are seeing the 2030 climate target plan uh, slide. No. Okay. Actually, I see myself now. I clicked on something I should not have. So. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, um, Eric, uh, we are not seeing it currently. Can you see the screen now? No, we only see you. Oh, that's okay. Because now I can see my screen, but you don't. <laughs> uh, let me... Maybe if you don't have it, uh, if it's not working, maybe you can have it as a non full screen. Maybe that would help somehow. At least we can see it now, but we can see it with the comments and everything. Now we don't see it. Yeah, okay. Now, now you, do you see it now? We do. Okay, but uh, not full screen, maybe? No, not full screen. And now do you see the complete picture? Yes, we do. Okay, all right. <laughs> so sorry about Thank this uh, technical hiccups. Uh, so as you can see, this uh, intermediate point at minus 55% by 2030 is approximately uh, on, a, on a line towards the climate neutrality in 2050. So that's why uh we found it this important that in order to reach the, the, the neutrality we definitely need to have a, a medium term target uh, which is uh, 2030 and so this will be uh, this has been supported by a comprehensive uh, impact assessment to assess uh, also the social economic uh, and of course environmental impacts uh, and indeed, it's to, to launch the, 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 the public debate so that we can eventually agree at European level to announce uh, an increased contribution to the Paris Agreement, uh, the, the COP. And so, 
concretely, it would mean uh, increasing the share of renewables. So the, presently, we have a target of 32%, so going up to 38.5. And for energy efficiency, uh, going from 32.5 to 36%. And that's where, uh, of course, also the uh, waste heat recovery in industry uh, has a role to play. And what is important in, in impact assessment is that uh, we, we looked indeed at the impact on the industries of uh, uh, increasing the ambition. And it shows that uh, the impact of this uh, higher ambition is positive uh, on the competitiveness of industries as being the, 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 the first, the, 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 the first, the leaders in, in that, in, in those markets. Uh, and so that would also create uh, uh, more jobs because uh, the current companies would be more competitive. It's also developing more uh, autonomy of the supply chains, uh, as we have seen with the COVID crisis, that it is so important to have a kind of sovereignty. And so it will be uh, by incentives for demand for renewable uh, energy, uh, for more electrification, so it means also that the production of heat, including in industry, will be more based on electrification, direct electrification, or indirectly uh, through renewable and low carbon fuels, uh, such as, of course, also hydrogen. Uh, and so this is important for, for you that uh, uh, you, you have to, to develop waste heat recovery techniques for industries that will change dramatically in the following decades, so to be kept in mind. And uh, also what I wanted to share is that together with the uh, State of the Energy Union, so in, in, in October, uh, was published a competitiveness progress report uh, and supported also by an analysis of the uh, uh, clean energy transition technologies uh, uh, and innovations. So uh, again, uh, with this context of COVID and the recovery, it's not only to, to look at how the uh, clean technologies can contribute to uh, fight the climate change, but also to uh, look at the uh, competitiveness of the companies uh, and also the, uh, look at, at the markets. And you have the link down there to to access uh, that that document. Uh, and indeed, it's it looked not only at technologies. You see the first column, not not only those indicators, but also indicators about the the strengths of the value chain uh, in Europe. Uh, that is the second column, and also the the markets, the the, the global markets. So really, in, in a view of developing those technologies also to create uh, economic activity in Europe, competitiveness and jobs. And uh, so in that uh, report, six main technologies were addressed, those ones that you see at the bottom, so offshore wind, ocean, PV, renewable, hydrogen, batteries and, and smart grids. Uh, but also in the supporting documents, uh, in total, 18 technologies uh, have been addressed. Uh, and again, you have the link to, 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 to access those uh, um, reports. Uh, and it's split in several parts because there are so many uh, technologies that it didn't fit into a single document. And you can see in part four, uh, the chapter 12 is about uh, industrial heat recovery. So I encourage you to go and have a look and uh, come to me with uh, these comments. Uh, because indeed that's an, uh, an ongoing process. This, this is the first time that we produce this report and we intend to have revisions every year. Okay, so that's the, the, the first point at the top, top left here. We, we uh, about the main findings, we, we will further develop this, uh, this assessment. Uh, I will not go to, to all of them, but on the right, uh, you see that uh, the outcome of the, the, the finding of the analysis is that clean energy technologies are outperforming conventional technologies in terms of value added, in terms of uh, labor and, and employment. So that's indeed very, very important. 
And then I wanted to also, well, this, of course, you, you certainly know that uh, under Horizon 2020, uh, there was uh, a, a topic that closed uh, recently, so in, in September this year, about uh, industrial waste heat recovery, but then conversion to, to power uh, with either organic ranking cycle or supercritical CO2 uh, technologies. And so the uh, uh, the evaluations uh, are finished, and uh, soon the results will be will be published. So the, these are projects managed by the agency EMEA, and you are projects, if I'm not wrong, from managed by agency ASME. But uh, never mind. Okay, looking more into the the future. So Horizon Europe, of course, the the bulk of uh, topics related to, to industry uh, will be in the cluster five, digital industry and space. So you see the word industry. So uh, there, uh, the, the, the presently running SPIRE partnership, uh, most likely or should be indeed uh, reconducted. So continued uh, under a new name, new name, processes for planet. Uh, but also, I wanted to, to tell you that also in cluster five, climate, energy, and mobility, uh, there are some topics addressing industrial facilities in, in transition, and more specifically uh, on the management of thermal energy. And so, topics. Uh, well, this is to, still to be to be confirmed. Still in discussion with the uh, member states and uh, associated countries. Uh, so that it, it will soon be finalized. Uh, maybe some of you uh, have access to drafts uh, through the uh, member state uh, national contact points. So, but so four four topics uh, should be. So uh, the first two ones are about heat upgrade. So heat upgrade. Uh, uh, the, the first one is uh, about technologies that are already more mature. So in the range of temperature 100 to 160, where some projects are running. And so now it's really to demonstrate them at full scale uh, so that uh, the benefits can be really demonstrated and, and better deployed. Uh, and so by heat rate, uh, of course, the, one of the main technologies is uh, heat pumps. Then the second topic is, is the same. Uh, but addressing temperatures that are not yet covered today. Uh, and so uh, going up to supply temperatures of 250 degrees. Uh, and there are other techniques than uh, heat pumps could, could, could enter into play. Uh, there it's rather a research and innovation action as those technologies are less mature. The third topic is about uh, thermal storage for industrial applications. And so I assume this is one of the components that uh, are uh, addressed in your analysis of waste heat recovery, um, being capable of storing the, the heat uh, to to use it, uh, well, to, to to store it when it is produced, and then to uh, use it maybe later thanks to to the storage. And then the the, the last topic is. Uh, similar to the one that we had on the Horizon 2020, so heat to power conversion. Uh, but uh, as the, the previous course, so the ongoing, uh, most probably will rather go to uh, funding supercritical CO2. This time it would rather be based on uh, ORC technology, so ranging, uh, tackling rather a lower temperature range. Of uh, waste heat. So uh, that's the what I wanted to to yeah okay. So this is still another one. So uh, and all of this contributes to uh, one of the biggest uh, chunks of uh, the energy strategy, which is energy system uh, integration, uh, where indeed we look towards, uh, we have six priorities. The first one is to go for a more circular uh, energy system. 
uh, with energy efficiency first principle. So that's really where the waste heat recovery comes into play. Uh, circular in that uh, the heat can be recovered within the, 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 the plant itself. That's always the, the, the easiest. But also in uh, industrial clusters to nearby plants or even to uh, local uh, communities for, for heating buildings um, in the communities. The second priority is uh, accelerating electrification of energy demand. So it would mean that the, uh, also the heat would be produced uh, uh, differently, uh, not only in the building sector, but also in industry. So again, an impact to you. Promoting renewable and low carbon fuels, uh, including hydrogen, that again uh, will reshape uh, industry, uh, energy, and feedstocks. And the uh, fourth point making energy markets fit for that. Uh, and this certainly is something that uh, resonates to, for you. Uh, if you address the, the, the business models, uh, the, this really fits into the, the energy uh, markets. Fifth point, integrated uh, energy infrastructure, because of course to make all of this work together, we have to uh, interconnect uh, the, uh, the various uh, energy vector grids uh, and uh, better also interconnect the uh, various uh, geographical regions uh, in, in Europe so that we really generate the energy where it's the, the best place to do it and then we either transform it for instance to hydrogen then transport it to the point of use uh, so this is really uh, an integrated in infrastructure in which of course the digitization and the sixth point will, will uh, have an, uh, a good contributing function yes and uh, yeah that, that's it so thank you very much for your attention uh, uh, and I, I'm afraid that I won't be able to uh, to maybe uh, follow it to to the end so if there is uh, a specific question maybe I could uh, answer now but okay. it's really up to, to you, the organizers of the, of the Okay, workshop. thank you very much, Eric. And uh, uh, now it will be Andrea Coleman from the Energy Institute of Linz presenting. As we are spoke uh, of waste, about waste heat, now we will be presenting first uh, energy cooperation, which includes, but it's not, uh, it's not limited to waste heat. So Andrea, you should be able to share your presentation now and uh, all uh, questions in uh, any case uh, will be answered probably uh, if not during uh, this session uh, later on. Thank you very much Francesco. My presentation, you can see it? Yes, perfectly. Wonderful, thank you. So hello everybody, my name is Andrea Kollmann, I'm from the Energy Institute at the University in Linz in Upper Austria, Austria. And I'm very happy to present you some insights into the project SPARKS today, which I'm lucky enough to be the coordinator of. SPARKS started in March 2018 and will continue most likely until June next year. We've just asked for an amendment um, to prolong our runtime, um, as many of you, I'm sure, also have the same issues right now in your Horizon projects. COVID has meant many things very difficult, especially in a project like ours, which is all about cooperation. We are a consortium of 12 partners from six different countries, Portugal, Spain, France, Austria, Italy, and Turkey. Our team consists of two universities, four research institutes, and a communication expert. And at the very core of our partners are five lighthouse industrial parks. These parks, we have two in Austria, um, Enshaven, which is a port and a mixed business park at the river Danube, very close to where I'm living in Upper Austria. Um, we have the Chemie Park Linz, which is the largest chemical park um, in, in Austria uh, that hosts some very big companies. Um, the biggest one there is Borealis. Another park is in Ponte Aigola, which is near Pisa in Tuscany. 
And this park is particularly interesting because it is the center of the Italian leather industry. And then we have two more parks and you can see them down um, on the right. They are in a rural setting in Basque country and also are mixed business parks. What are we aiming for? Well, our goal is to develop replicable instruments um, for energy cooperation and to provide industrial park managers as well as single companies in industrial parks with all the tools needed to make energy cooperation solutions happen. Our work covers everything from the development of business models to the design of templates for contracts. We are currently working on policy briefs about national legal and regulatory frameworks, uh, specifically for Spain, Austria and Italy. Um, Francesco, who is our moderator today, is in charge of this, these activities and we will be starting to deliver that, to disseminate them um, later this year. In addition to what we did um, with Energy Corporation, we developed an online platform that my colleague Lola will talk about later today. So let me give me a brief overview of how we approach the topic of energy cooperation. The first thing was to identify potential solutions for industrial park. And um, we were quite successful in that and identified 41 of them, which we then clustered into five different categories. So we cover solutions that um, are managerial actions, um, we cover contractual instruments. We also, of course, look at physical installations and the installation of new monitoring, new ICT infrastructures um, and technologies. And a big part of um, the, the solutions that we've been looking at also deal with logistics and mobility solutions in the park. Pretty much all of the solutions that we've looked at could also be doable by a single company alone. What is interesting for us and what was also the focus of our analysis is how the cooperative implementation could make um, them more efficient and lead to win-win situations for all the partners involved in such an energy cooperative solution. What we did then in the next step was to match all of these solutions with possible barriers. We knew from the beginning that there must be many different reasons why um, there aren't more energy cooperation projects ongoing in industrial parks. Again, as you can see, we clustered all of our barriers, obvious economic barriers, social managerial barriers, things again like regular, legal and regulatory framework issues. Uh, we touched upon technical and engineering related barriers and finally a big topic in, in, in all of our um, projects and in all of our parks is the question of information provision and sharing of data between companies that might be in a competitive situation with each other and how we can um, overcome such a barrier when it comes to implementing a solution. All of this we didn't do only as desk research exercise, but we actually went out into the parks and all of them and conducted dozens and dozens of interviews with park managers, um, with the head of companies, to find out what their perspective on energy cooperation actually is, um, what they find particularly interesting, what they find to be the most um, important barriers for their situation. As you may know from other comparable projects that were done in the past, especially about industrial symbiosis, this um, social organizational and information provision area has also proven to be the most important one um, in our project and from all the talks that we had with companies. Next up, knowing about solutions, knowing about barriers, we of course went on to try to find out, to try to find instruments to overcome these barriers and to support the actual implementation of the solution. Um, what we saw is that obviously the most valuable instruments are those that are transversal both to the various barriers within a cluster but also among, across all the clusters that we've identified. Examples of such instruments include training and awareness raising activities which is something that we are doing um, and above everything else the most important tool for us in the project so far has been to have workshops in the parks to enhance communication between companies, to actually bring companies together um, so that they can exchange their ideas, their visions for the future. Um, this is not necessarily something that companies know of each other, especially um, when energy is not the most important aspect um, in their actual production processes. 
Um, another important aspect that I would like to mention today, because I know that this is something that pretty much all industrial projects um, deal with, and this is these are key performance indicators. Um, we also found that in addition to being able to quantify solutions from an economic point of view, from an energetic point of view, KPIs can be a very valuable tool in an ex ante situation for a company or part thinking about implementing energy cooperation solutions. Um, and especially to have a tool that allows them to compare different options um, in from a number of different perspectives. And we came up with six different types of indicators, um, organizational ones, financial ones, but also environmental ones. Um, when you look at our latest deliverable, for example, we also did NCA analysis for, for many of the solutions that we've looked at. Finally, and this is just one more slide, Francesco, then I'm done. Um, from this is where we are right now. Um, actual feasibility studies in the five parks that we are looking at. Um, we've just published the deliverable um, that gives you an overview of these feasibility studies. And as you can see, we took a deep dive into very different solutions from installing small hydropower plants um, to um, joint charging stations. Um, thank you all very much. And as I said at the beginning, uh, you will learn more about experts and the tools that we've developed um, a bit later on. Thank you, Francesco. Thank you very much, Andrea. And uh, thank you. I will be now. It will be the turn of uh, Yorgos to present. Uh, he's an uh, innovation program manager at the Iris Technology Solution, and uh, he will be presented uh, present into this project. So please, Yorgos. Good morning, everyone. I don't know if you can see my screen already. Yes, we do. Thank you very much. So, excellent. So, good morning. Today I will be speaking to you about Incubus project, as you can see in your monitors, hopefully. So, very quickly, to give you an introduction, as you can see from the title, Incubus is concerned with industrial symbiosis, uh, utilization for maximizing waste heat cold efficiencies in industrial parks and industrial districts. Um, we are a project that uh, started last May and we will be uh, operational for three years uh, with a budget of approximately two million to give you an idea of the size of the project. Uh, we have a consortium of eight partners, six of which are SMEs, one of which is a large company and one a university. And we operate over six different European countries. Um, I will not waste more time on this part. I just want to introduce very quickly our main, um, uh, the background of the project, the main concepts involved. So, um, Incubus is focused on uh, energy symbiosis. Uh, so, what could that be in, in very simple terms? And you had a, a small reference to that in the previous presentation from Sparks project. Uh, energy symbiosis refers to the exploitation of energy efficiency opportunities found across industries and sectors. So we're looking basically at heat recovery and in general waste energy exploitation between different industries and between different sites, not within the same site. Now, energy symbiosis has been around for quite a while now. It's not a new thing, but it has some barriers that prevent it from reaching its full potential. Um, the main barriers, uh, there is a very long list of barriers and problems, but I want to just mention here the main things. It's mostly an issue of, um, of risk management and of risk, which is uh, concentrated mainly in the project development phase. So we have a very high risk in uh, developing energy symbiosis projects, and also we have very low risk tolerance from the stakeholder that would invest in these projects. Um, in the project development activities, I mean. Uh, and finally, these stakeholders also lack the skills or the capacities or the resources to uh, conduct properly uh, risk management. As a result, we have projects that are often uh, stuck at the project development phase and are never uh, delivered. The solution is known um, and it is quite successful. Uh, so, the solution is the existence of an intermediary organization called facilitator often, uh, who has the structure and the capacity to overcome these problems and deliver the projects. So, what 
is the the goal or the vision of uh, incubus is that uh, we have to somehow increase the number of organizations that can actually systematically develop and deliver energy synthesis projects and therefore what we do is we follow the incubator model whereby we're not incubating uh, any type of business but specifically we are uh, aiming at organizations that can be facilitators uh, and uh, we are going to develop in the we are developing currently we are going to launch as of may 2021 the energy symbiosis incubator that will provide uh, support to these organizations that can act as energy symbiosis facilitators uh, with the aim to improve their capacity obviously to deliver energy symbiosis projects um, in doing so we will also set up a virtual platform uh, that will support the delivery of all the tools, services, and methods uh, of the incubator, and will also support the organizations we are uh, helping to deliver energy symbiosis. Um, you can see here that our model basically, I will not go in detail through all the uh, services, but the, our model is to uh, launch uh, such incubators in five regions across Europe and maybe. Here you can see the regions are in Barcelona, uh, Spain, in uh, Dunkirk uh, of France, uh, in the Hull region, uh, in the Humber, sorry, region of uh, the UK, in South Norway, Agde region, and in Brunsbüttel in Germany, in Brunsbüttel uh, city and uh, industrial park. And the type of services and methods we are uh, delivering here uh, involves techno economic assessment, um, business development, uh, implementation frameworks for symbiosis, facilitation methodologies for uh, delivering symbiosis, um, and of course, working across uh, training policies and impact monitoring for these projects. Um, and you can see in this scheme which partners are responsible for what type of uh, service and tool. Um, the approach we are taking here is that uh, uh, we are working on uh, case studies that existed before the beginning of uh, the project. We are learning from them and uh, as of year two and three, we uh, intend to multiply these energy symbiosis projects in the five areas of the project and hopefully by the end of the project work also outside of these areas. Uh, and what we are doing is that for each uh, energy symbiosis project, we are uh, providing uh, support uh, across uh, the life cycle of energy symbiosis which is, I think, the typical life cycle of uh, an energy project uh, involving a preliminary assessment, uh, opportunity identification, feasibility study, uh, and finally delivery and implementation. Um, very quickly, I want to say that the target audience here, so basically who can be the facilitator? Um, it's a, a, a big variety of organizations. They can be private uh, organizations like, for example, uh, energy service uh, companies or district heating uh, operators. Uh, they can be cluster managers or industry associations. They can be also chambers of industry and local governments. Uh, so we are uh, aiming at all these uh, organizations as possible clients, let's say, of our service. And we have also, I don't want to go in detail here, a number of uh, impacts that we are uh, estimating we will achieve, both in terms of primary energy savings uh, triggered by the project, but also in terms of uh, uh, investment in millions of euros, uh, uh, as well as uh, how many businesses and parks we will work with uh, to deliver those services. Um, and I think this is from my side. I don't want to uh, stay for too long. You can contact myself and Emil Lezak for more information, or you can find us in our website, LinkedIn, and Twitter accounts. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Diorgos. And uh, all the, this information will be shared with uh, the audience after this uh, webinar. Now I'm uh, giving the floor to Peter. Borden. He is the co-founder of Condugo and he, he has a wide experience in the energy sector in Europe and he was the founder of the national energy cluster Flux 50 in Belgium. Peter, you should, you should, yes, we can see your screen, first slide. Perfect, thank you very uh, much. Maybe Peter, you can turn on the camera. 
because we cannot see you. We can see you now, but uh, we cannot hear you yet. Uh, so please check if your microphone is unmuted. No, we cannot hear you. Uh, no, we can't hear you. Maybe you can try to reselect uh, your yeah. audio. Okay, okay now audio. it's working. Yeah, uh, it, yeah, it was working. I was checking it before and now all of a sudden it, uh, it went away. Okay, good morning, everyone. The Racist Project. The idea of this project is that we wanted to make sure that there's a future for industry in Europe. And it came with two realizations. A, industry should step up its act on sustainability. And B, it could not do so alone. So the entire concept of what we do is trying to create eco-regions where we actually take an industrial site as the core of an entire region and then connect it to its surroundings, connecting it with a fourth or fifth generation district heating and cooling network with renewable energy and with a smart energy control system to tie it all together. The goal of RACES is not just to develop this concept, but really to roll it out to make sure that it gets applied everywhere, that it gets implemented all across Europe, and make sure that we save at least 10% in CO2 emissions. The goal here is rather, I would say, ambitious, but we started with a list, a, a list of, of 90 high potential areas, which was identified on the European Thermal Roadmap. And of those 90 areas, three are in the consortium. So we are working with three industrial sites that were really developing into such eco regions one in Denmark, one in Belgium, and one in Italy, the north of Italy. The most important thing in this project is that we work on the non technical barriers for creating such areas. So we really try to get areas where there already is potential to the stage where they can interconnect their business park with their surroundings and actually save the CO2 in the end. What we offer here is support. We really offer support by setting up learning communities, clubs of people in and around those areas, and we support them with methodology, but also with three concrete tools. One is a self-assessment tool, which is really the kind of quick scan where you can gauge how far you are along in terms of building an ecoregion, whether the collaboration networks are already there, whether you have an experience with such project, whether there is uh, support from government and so on. The second tool, the legal decision support tool, is one that many of you will recognize. If you want to set up collaboration, you will have to design contracts, you have to work, you have to find legal ways to work together. And that's exactly what you can find in the legal decision support tool. It's actually a set of, uh, of templates, contract templates that you can look into. And finally, the energy management platform is a software tool, advanced software tool, that will show you objectively what the energy flows on your site are and what they could be. And that creates transparency. I think one of the speakers mentioned it before, trust, transparency, if you're really talking about energy collaboration, setting up real energy clusters, then you have to know what the potential is, what the benefit, the value added is for each of the participants. And that's exactly what this tool can provide. As I said, we start with three sites in Europe, but we boost it afterwards to 10 eco regions. So in the beginning on those three sites, we will basically test the approach and validate that the tools really add the value that we wanted to add, that we can set up such learning communities, that we achieve our targets. Once we validate that, we scale it up to another seven regions. So we reach 10 regions in all. And if it works there, we will further disseminate, distribute the approach, if you want, to another 80 regions so that we reach all of the 90 high impact regions that we initially identified. So this is what we are achieving over the next two years to go. And um, yeah, I hope to, 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 to really change with the other projects here as well, because this is a huge challenge for all of us in Europe. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. And uh, as you mentioned the uh, challenge, I will launch a, a quick poll just to see what uh, the audience think about challenges. And I think this will be something uh, 
nice also to discuss at the, in the final session as uh, the idea is to understand in the, in the perspective of the audience which are the main challenges for energy cooperation and waste heat. I know that uh, all projects as parks incubus and races identified some of them and uh, I think that uh, we agree on a fair amount of them but uh, it's interesting also to know which is uh, the feedback from uh, from our audience. Uh, then I anticipate you that uh, we will be talking about tools. Uh, races provide uh, the assist. Thank you, Peter. Uh, this will be the focus of the next uh, session, uh, where so what will be presented by Nick Pushaus, which is a senior project manager. At the IS research and development and uh, is focusing is on uh, built environment and uh, intelligent communities. So uh, you can see that uh, people are voting and uh, we are going to close in uh, five seconds the poll. So if you have not voted yet, please do so. Okay, uh, I can anticipate you that uh, the main uh, challenges are where yeah, you can see them in the economic and organization areas, not uh, neglecting the technical and awareness. Legal, it's a little bit uh, less stressed. So, Nick, please, uh, you are, you should be able to share your screen now, and uh, uh, please keep the time. We are a little bit late, nothing crucial. We can see your screen, I guess, not the first one. We cannot hear you, Nick. No. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, we don't can you hear me now? Yes. yes. But we don't see the screen or your camera. Now we see the screen. That's great. Okay. Uh, okay. And can can you just see one slide full screen? No, we don't. Uh, we see it in uh, presenters mode now. Yes. If you can switch now, the better screens. now. Uh, we we are seeing it, but not full screen. It's in presenter okay. mode, I think, and we cannot see your webcam. Um. Okay. We can see so your webcam you now. See my webcam. And now it's full screen. Perfect. Now it's full screen. Brilliant. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, I'm all. In the middle of a, I, I live in Scotland and I'm in the middle of a storm uh, outside at the moment, which seems to be interfering a little bit with my connection. Um, and I will try and move closer to the router, but uh, please let me know if there are connection issues. Um, so, hello, uh, my name is Nick Pursehouse. Um, I'm from a company called um, IES um, and we uh, do dynamic thermal simulations um, uh, for the built environment. Um, and as part of so what, um, we're looking to expand our capability um, to also include uh, waste, heat and cooling uh, for the community. Um, we currently uh, just do sort of um, have capabilities for buildings and uh, the electricity network. Um, and so we're looking to expand that. Um, the main objective of so what is to develop and demonstrate a market ready integrated software. Um, and I emphasize market ready. This is um, not just going to be um, sort of a prototype at the end of the project. We are hoping to launch this at the end of the project into the actual market as a commercial uh, software. Uh, and the idea is that um, you'll be able to select and simulate um, and compare uh, different waste heat and waste cooling technologies, either just at a, an industry level um, but also uh, to understand how that waste, heat and cooling can be used within the wider community um, and how you can balance the local forecasted demand and supply and also how you can uh, integrate um, sort of the waste, heat and cooling with any renewable energy um, that you may have in the wider community. Um, so we started about uh, 18 months ago. So this month uh, we're about halfway through the project um and that is wrong there it's actually uh sorry yes it ends in may 22. so i'll just go to the next slide
Nick, uh, you are the okay. one who have to pass the slides. Sorry, it's that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> there's there's a delay. That's okay. Thank you. Um, so the timeline for the project, as I said, um, is is sort of over the next couple of years, and uh, we've currently halfway through the project, and we have done um, industrial site assessments already. So we actually have 11, 11 demo sites that we're going to be using the software and testing the software um, on in this project. Um, we've developed a sort of technology database um, that contains all of the technical and economic parameters uh, concerning different technologies in waste, heat and cooling. Um, and we've also specified um, what the software needs to do, um, both from a, uh, an end user perspective and also from a, um, I guess, an IT perspective. Um, we're halfway through doing some business model analysis um, and also trying to understand um, sort of how we can integrate um, sort of energy performance contracting um, and also looking at distributed ledger technologies as well um, into uh, the waste, heat and cooling area. Um, over the next year, uh, we're going to be developing the software and also validating it in all of the different industry and demo cases. And the final part of the project is to do um, an analysis of the impact and sort of the lessons learned and replicate a lot of the things that we're doing with the demo sites, hopefully um, across more uh, industries and communities. I'll just talk briefly through some of the functions that the tool will do. Um, you know, there's three broad areas. Um, first of all, you've got to baseline uh, the waste, heat and cooling as you have it now um, in your industry or community to try and understand what the potential is for, you know, for sort of doing this. Um, so the software will have a um, kind of integrated and minimal data collection um, associated to it. We'll be able to show lots of different energy flows and what the, the waste, heat and cooling baseline is from an industry perspective. We'll be able to show from a community's perspective what your heat and power supply and demand are, and that is wrapped nicely in a 3D view. Um, then we also have on the simulation side of things, uh, a lot of different technologies, um, which I'll move on to in a second, um, to do with waste, heat and cooling, um, and how you can integrate that with renewable energy technology and balancing um, sort of the, the forecasted heat and cooling demand and supply. And then the final part of the software is looking at reporting and decision support, where we have lots of different KPIs, whether you're from a financial perspective or an energy perspective or an environment perspective, we'll be able to simulate those and show you results of different technologies. You'll be able to compare those technologies to optimize your solution um, and also uh, have a look at the, what the best business model um, is to apply that solution. Obviously, we were just seeing before that a lot of people saw barriers um, in uh, the financial areas, for example, um, to implementing waste heat um, in, in an area. So uh, hopefully this could help with that. Um, this is just a, an example of the view that we've come up with at the moment um, and that we've developed within the software already. Um, and this is a, a stanky diagram. I appreciate it's quite small. Um, but this, for, this is for one of the industries to try and show all of the different energy flows within a factory site um, and sort of where the waste heat is, which is um, in the sort of the, towards the top right hand corner um, of this image um, in red. That's sort of where waste heat, uh, the amount of and quality of waste heat is shown there. Um, so to get to that image, we try and uh, get as much data as we can from the particular industry. But if you haven't got all of the data we need, that's OK. We've developed sort of ways uh, to, um, I guess, make that easier to get to this final picture. Um, and, and that's quite a good, uh, I think, sort of tool for industries to see. Um, these are all of the different technologies that we're going to try and simulate within the software. Um, so some of these IES can do already. Um, such as anything to do with sort of boilers uh, or sorption chillers. Uh, and we can also do organic ranking cycle as well at the moment. But a lot of the other areas we still have to develop. Um, and um, we're, we're doing that with the help of, help of academia as well through the project. Um, we've also come up with a methodology already um, that will guide the user uh, 
as to which technologies will best suit um, their industry or from a community community perspective, um, you know, how they want to kind of look at uh, waste heat supply and demand at a community level. So I'm not going to talk through all of these, but we have developed quite a nice methodology that and scenarios that people can select and simulate. Just and then finally, the these. thank you, I'm, I'm near the end, I've got one more slide. Um, and then finally, at the end of this, uh, these are just uh, examples of how uh, a user might might view the results. Um, we've also got 11 demo sites, as I said before, across a number of different countries and different uh, industry sectors. So we're covering quite a few bases here. And then finally, the uh, project has a number of uh, targets associated to it. Um, which I'm not going to talk all the way through. Um, I'll just let you see some of those. Um, and obviously, at the end of the project, uh, I think the big impact is really the final, the final uh, couple of targets there to reach a large number of industrial sites and communities by the end of the project, and then from there to try to trigger um, a lot of, uh, I guess, jobs and further uh, use of an implementation of waste heat and cooling technologies. Um, through this project and uh, that is the end um, thank you very much thank you very much Nick I anticipated you there are a few questions for you that we'll see later uh, Zenaida you should be able to share your screen Zenaida Morao is the head of the energy group at Inegi with uh, expertise on sustainable energy use and uh, in the building environment Zenaida, the floor is yours. Thank you, Francesco. I uh, hope you can hear me. I'm going to try and yes. share my screen and see if that's working. Yes. So let me know if you can. Can you see my screen now? Yes, first slide of the presentation. Oh, it should have been in the right place. <laughs> I don't know why it's not in the right place. So let's try and. Yeah, let me see if I can do this. Um, yeah, because I'm, I'm already in the correct, I was in the correct, sorry. It's probably moving okay. as people are presenting. Yeah, let me just see if I can get to the right place. Okay. Sorry, it's, it's taking a little bit. Okay, I so I guess it. you can see the right slide yes. now. Thank you. Um, so uh, Embers is, uh, was a project that was um, actually funded at the same time, or it was within the same call uh, as uh, the SOAT project. So we had um, basically the, the same type of uh, requirements, let's say, in terms of, uh, of what the project should do. Um, and um, in, in the case of Embers, uh, so it is a um, um, a project with 16 partners, um, and we have uh, seven case studies of implementation. Some of them are similar to uh, the the type of case studies that SOWAT also has. Um, uh, we are also uh, applying for a, a three-year project, um, and we have a mix of um, of partners from different backgrounds. So we have uh, industries, uh, uh, research institutions. Uh, we also have a, a couple of, um, of institutions that are uh, either sort of making the, the, the connection between uh, the private and the public sector, namely uh, related with energy agencies. Um, and uh, uh, we also have uh, um, as, as I said, companies, research institutions, and so this uh, intermediate uh, um, profile between the private and the public sector. 
Um, our main goals in terms of uh, of the development, so we like uh, so what the uh, the the main goal behind uh, the project is to develop a, a modeling platform uh, which would identify the feasible uh, solutions for uh, energy, uh, so for thermal access, thermal um, energy recovery and use, um, and so especially focused on on industries, but it can be actually used by other types of users, and we'll see that a little bit in terms of the use cases that we are implementing this tool into um, and the idea is to simulate uh, different alternative scenarios for for that um, uh, recovery and use and also to look at uh, the business side so uh, what are the advantages and uh, how how is actually that heat that is recovered and also valorized um, and it's it's uh, the idea is that it should be uh, able to be independently used by a wide variety of industries and other types of uh, stakeholders and users and it different EU geographies. So I guess we'll have to, okay. Um, so in terms of more specific objectives, the idea is that um, uh, using the, the, the data that's provided by the users of the platform, and this is namely for the industries, but uh, as I said, any other user with access to thermal energy would also be able to use uh, the platform. Um, the idea is to, uh, so we have fourfold objectives. So one uh, is to identify uh, who are the relevant users of that access heat within a given geographical area. Um, we'll also be looking into characterizing the type of heat that's available, heat or, or cold, uh, so it could be any sort of thermal access, uh, thermal flow, um, and matching that the, the quality of that access thermal flow with uh, potential uh, demand for for the at that same quality. Um, the idea is to explore different routes. So if if we look here in terms of the implementation, so the the idea is to explore different scenarios, which is something that the other projects are also looking into so it could be the internal reuse of that heat or, or cold but it could also be used within other industries and this would be the scenario where we have the industrial symbiosis so looking at the for example industrial park um, it could be also to use within uh, buildings uh, so if anything from commercial to residential or to a combination of those two um, and uh, it could also be thought of as being used for example in uh, in agriculture for greenhouses which is something for example, that happens uh, uh, quite a bit. It could happen in, in some places that have uh, uh, quite a bit of an integrated um, uh, production of food within their uh, urban environment, for example, as I was just thinking of one example, which is the Netherlands. Um, and the idea is to also, in addition to this uh, assessment of the technological side and for the cost side, also to assess the business models that make all of this feasible um, and to look also at some policy instruments um, uh, that could be used to overcome some barriers to the implementation, uh, which have already been mentioned here also by other projects. So how do we do this? As I said, uh, there is one first step, which is the assessment of the actual quality of the of, let's say, of these uh, industrial flows that's available. Um, and once that's done, so once that assessment is done and the platform will help industries do this, um, then we have uh, four, uh, the four different types of analysis that are actually integrated within the platform, uh, which allow uh, to look for um, ways basically uh, reusing that heat. And if we are heat or cold, if we are looking into reusing those streams outside of the plant, of the industrial plant, uh, we have to look, of course, for uh, potential matches uh, within a given geographical distance. So we have a GS module that looks for the lowest cost path uh, to do that. Uh, we then have a techno-economic module, which basically looks into something similar uh, to what SOAT is looking into as well. So uh, looking at this um, uh, a portfolio of different technologies and different ways of linking basically the sources of, of the thermal uh, uh, energy and the users of the and the sinks of this thermal energy. So ways of connecting them and the types of technologies that might need to be um, uh, deployed to do that. Um, then we also have a market uh, a component that looks into ways of, and this comes from the side of the valorization of this heat um, or cold stream. So how can we look into pricing options and, and what sorts of markets would um, enable uh, this exchange to occur? And finally, on top of all of this is, of course, the, the business model side, um, which will do uh, different types of analysis. So a financial and environmental and risk analysis. Um, and this uh, 
of the tool is something that can be used in a collaborative mode. So we could have different stakeholders um, and basically adding their own um, different stakeholders using the same system, but uh, but basically adding some potential uh, requirements or constraints from, from their side and then running collaborative simulations in order to see uh, what would be the best model to work for that particular system. Uh, and just lastly, I just wanted to mention briefly, as I said, we have uh, the idea here is to cover in a way the whole value chain that would be involved in, uh, in, um, in basically the recovery and reuse and the valorization of these excess thermal energy streams. Um, and so we have industry focused case studies, which, which were the main, initially the main uh, um, uh, users of the platform. Uh, then we have the network focused case studies, because of course, if we're connecting users and uh, so basically the excess uh, heat producers and the, the the users of the of that excess thermal energy uh, and if if they're not within the let's say within a industrial park or within the same industry then what we want to do is, is connect them to the networks and so we have the network focused case study where we have actually some companies um, uh, in Portugal and in Sweden uh, that uh, that are uh, uh, network operators working with us um, and uh, also we have uh, uh, in the last type of, of user which uh, uh, it's sort of this last uh, chain in the, in, the, in the value chain so we have the super users which would be more institutions from the the, the policy side and also from the auditing side who have uh, a lot of information available that could potentially be used in order to identify synergies of heat uh, producers and heat users within a given area. Um, and uh, we also have uh, one case study where we'll be focusing specifically on looking at different types of market uh, enabler, market structural enablers for the for the use of, of, uh, of excess thermal energy. Um, and these are some uh, some of the goals that we have within each one of the of the case studies um, and as you see there are different routes that we are exploring in terms of the industry but also different uh, possibilities with uh, with the network fo focused case studies and of course these uh, the the different typologies of then um, uh, types of stakeholders that could be involved within the um, within the case studies and uh, that's it from my side thank you thank you very much uh, Zenaida. and uh, now I will land over to Lola from uh, Fundacion Circe. She is uh, a project manager and researcher uh, focused on energy characterization and environmental performances. You should, I can see your screen. Thank you very much, Lola. And uh, we are concluding this session from what we started the Spark project. Please. Hello, uh, I'm, my name is Lola, as uh, Francesco said. I'm with my colleagues, together with my colleagues from uh, CICE Foundation, we have been uh, in charge of developing the SPARKS uh, tools. Uh, I want to explain very quick what we have this developed within the project. Uh, the main aim of the tools is overcoming the non technological barriers that uh, can be found uh, in the energy cooperation uh, um, services or, or solutions between companies and uh, within industry parks so in this sense we want to uh, to offer the, uh, the this kind of uh, users holders um, raising awareness of an, on energy cooperation issues uh, on the other side we want to connect uh, stakeholders all over Europe uh, supporting the implementation of energy cooperation solutions and assessing and identifying tailored, tailored energy cooperation solutions for an industrial park. How we are going to offer this? I'm going to explain it in the, in the next uh, slide. Uh, uh, for this, we have developed, uh, first of all, uh, a free uh, online website. Uh, we call it a platform or a community where uh, first we offer uh, like free um, um, uh, open uh, open contents. Uh, there is no need to register to see what is inside. Uh, the first one is um, a section of energy cooperation for beginners where we explain a little bit what is energy cooperation, what kind of energy cooperation solutions can be implemented in uh, industrial parks in uh, where the companies collaborate between them, the barriers that can uh, uh, appear when the energy cooperation process starts or, or even before and the business solutions that can be done between the uh, in terms of agreement uh, contracts etc between the companies and uh, within the parks 
other uh, uh, other output we give them is to offer them to uh, show the if they have already implemented any energy cooperation solution in a successful way, uh, we offer them to show it uh, through the, this platform in a section that is called best practices, uh, where uh, where here they could gain uh, more visibility uh, for those solutions and also for the parks that have implemented them. After that, we, sorry, I don't know, sorry. Yeah. The uh, other um, outputs we offer, uh, and I think are the more important uh, uh, are, first of all, the Sparks Initial Assessment Tool, where uh, we offer uh, to the par uh, representative parks and the companies within the park um, a list of possible solutions, but tailored, uh, tailored uh, solutions just for those parks uh, that could be implemented uh, in that park. Uh, for, the, for that, we uh, ask uh, the park and also the, some uh, the key companies within the park uh, some information to understand their current situation and to to show them the list of possible energy cooperation solutions that could fit uh, to to them uh, and also we uh, display some information uh, within each of the the solutions apart from that uh, and uh, uh, we offer uh, an, an um, feasibility studies uh, for each of the solutions and also a comparison between them them in terms of different uh, influencing KPIs. Uh, in this sense, are, uh, those KPIs are uh, legal and regulatory, environmental, technical, uh, financial, etc. There are uh, five. Uh, Andrea explained them before uh, when she, she was playing these parts. And uh, if uh, with this information, if the park uh, dis decide to uh, go for it, go for forward to, to implement this solution, they have another uh, possibility is uh, much making tool that we call it a sparse community where uh, we uh, is a, um, a point of uh, meeting between uh, industrial parks representatives and uh, supporting organizations uh, or companies that want to are willing to support these parks in the implementation of the, of the uh, solutions in terms of uh, legal uh, support uh, technical support and uh, f events and financial support uh, so they both uh, register the uh, the information is asked, is asked for them and uh, at the end they will uh, find um, possible matches between them and uh, they can start to contact uh, and uh, is the starting point for the collaboration. Uh, so the interest users for these um, tools are mainly the park representatives and companies for the industry, uh, the, the initial assessment tool and the uh, companies, I'm uh, sorry, the park representatives and the stakeholders, uh, so-called stakeholders in the, in the project, but these stakeholders could, can be uh, companies, consultant companies, uh, organizations, etc. Um, and th those two uh, park representatives and stakeholders are the potential users for the matchmaking tool. And finally, uh, the future steps for the tool itself are more that understand what is uh, the industrial parks for performance and willingness of uh, participating in energy cooperation solutions, uh, and also uh, act as a first step external facilitator uh, on the energy transition. No? Start, uh, um, overcome the first barriers they, they can uh, face. No? And the main challenge for this is to create a following uh, community that is robust and uh, lasting in the time. And uh, the community um, starts to, to have uh, activity. No? Um, and the future work will consist of, of providing more support to the industrial parks, giving them the path for possible relations between them, between the park and the, the companies and also the, the local communities uh, through successful business models, cases and examples, all of this information obtained from, from Sparks Project. And uh, that's all from my side. Uh, um, mainly it's just to just to give uh, the support for both uh, energy um, sorry industrial parks and, and companies to start their collaboration between them for the energy transition thank you very much thank you very much Lola and uh, please let me share my screen now for one last uh, slide I have uh, prepared and uh, 
this is one uh, summarizing slide. I think that uh, today we you can have uh, seen and heard about uh, these five projects. We worked uh, together to organize this uh, short webinar and we found that there are uh, synergies among us, some uh, superposition probably, but uh, mainly we found opportunities for cooperation. It was uh, one of the theme of uh, today's uh, webinar. Uh, our objectives are common and uh, are to lower the energy costs uh, to achieve a more sustainable and efficient energy for industries and communities uh, in order to re reduce CO2 emission uh, as well as increase the cooperation and the community. In this sense, uh, I am sure uh, that uh, all projects, uh, all organizations working in this project are open for collaboration. If you found uh, anything especially interesting, uh, you are welcome to contact us. And uh, well, in this slide, there are some key facts about the project and uh, we will share the slides. Now I would like to ask the various uh, presenter to just uh, open their camera. We have uh, some question uh, we will try to answer. Okay, first of all, let me thank you all uh, you as a panelist, first of all, and I have to thank also other people who worked uh, together with us to create and to organize this webinar, both from the communication team and uh, over that. And uh, I'm, uh, I hope that uh, we survived the expectation of our audience, which was uh, very numerous. And uh, now there is some question I would like to address you and uh, please, uh, if there is any other question, write that in the in the chat in the question box, and we will try to answer it now or uh, later. Uh, the first one is uh, for Nick, I think, and Diana asks uh, uh, that point out that uh, the dynamic simulations can be quite energy intensive to generate, and uh, she would like to know how this is being powered. Okay, I'm I'm assuming that that's about. Uh, whether this is done on a like powered through a like a desktop computer or whether it's cloud-based rather than kind of what <laughs> you know where does the electricity come from to power it um, but um, essentially the tool will actually have two different versions so there will be quite a um, I guess we're terming it as a, as a free basic version uh, which will be online based um, and obviously uh, much less user um, intensive resource intensive um, than sort of perhaps a commercial version, but it will be run sort of through cloud uh, software. And then there's a commercial version that will be desktop based um, and uh, yeah, more um, user and resource intensive, but still trying to keep it as minimal as possible. Um, but it will be powered through your own desktop and, and downloaded um, via a license. I hope that answers that question. Okay. Uh... Great, thank you very much. And uh, one question uh, to Andrea, it's uh, how about uh, measuring the progress uh, for the KPIs? Well, we have two different reports that we made for the KPIs. One is um, uh, a general introduction to which KPIs we choose, how we specify them, how we plan to measure them, and how we cluster them. So as I said, we have six clusters of KPIs. Overall, we have more than 30 KPIs that actually make up these six overall KPIs. And we have a second report, which is a very technical one, in which we actually propose algorithms um, how to measure um, each and every one of our 30 KPIs. And uh, in this document, we also make up our mind about uh, what kind, how often it makes sense to measure such um, data before we begin with the project, and then afterwards to actually measure the progress towards achieving um your overall goals and um measure the have, have a quantitative measure to see how well you are developing and in which parts of your solution might make more problems or maybe more successful than others both documents by the way are pretty downloadable um, from our website great thank you very much andrea and uh, i do have a question i guess from eric uh, Diana asks, uh, point out that carbon emission has uh, no geographic boundaries 
and uh, most countries uh, signed the Paris Agreement and COP26, but delayed uh, everything due to COVID. And uh, she asks uh, if there are lessons learned uh, to achieve uh, the net zero emission. Difficult one for you, Eric. We cannot uh, hear you. Yes. Uh, okay. Now we can that's hear. a question from the from the chat. Yes, it's among the first ones. Because I honestly I didn't capture what you told me. So what time was it posted? Uh, Eleven twenty-one. I will just. Uh, well, I don't. I don't see that question. So, is it about carbon tax? Yeah. Well, there are another one about carbon tax. So, if you can elaborate a bit on that, this is more than one actually. But uh, because I don't see the, the the one you are mentioning. So, can you please repeat the question? Yes. Uh, the question is, uh, which are the lessons learned uh, to achieve the net zero, uh, also due to the delays uh, which was which are caused by COVID? Yes, indeed, um, that's uh, that's that's a big question uh, because uh, member states uh, invest a lot in uh, just helping their economy to survive and to avoid bankruptcies, which is uh, indeed the, the first thing that is needed. We, we need to, to keep at least, well, certainly the, the, the companies that were healthy before have to be sustained. Uh, now uh, we really have to think about the recovery uh, after the COVID crisis as not going back to normal, but really taking advantage of the huge funds that uh, will be uh, made available uh, to the uh, to, to the member states through the recovery and resilience plan, and so the the name itself uh, recovery and resilience. So meaning that we want to be more resilient uh, after that, not only to COVID crisis but also more resilient to uh, to, to the climate change, uh, and also prevent climate change, of course, by the uh, uh, by all the measures that we take. So uh, both in the national energy climate plans that all the member states had to submit by the end of last year and which were assessed by, by the Commission, and also in the recovery plans that they will have to submit, uh, well, if they wish to access the funding, but of course both all of them will do. Uh, we already have received some uh, draft plans uh, and the final plans uh, at the latest are due next year in April. So definitely in those plans there is a requirement that 35, no, 37 percent uh, of the uh, funding or loans uh, that are involved in those plans really uh, address the climate change, so measures that uh, combat the, the climate change. So that. Uh, indeed, the, the COVID uh, crisis is uh, taking money uh, away because of uh, immediate needs that have to be, to be covered. But uh, on the other hand, uh, huge amounts of money will be made available and that money uh, will have to contribute to combating the, the, the climate. I don't know if this uh, answers your question. Yes, thank you very much, Eric. And uh, there is a question for everyone, I believe, and it's about uh, if uh, blockchain is uh, considered to drive a solution. I can answer for so what, and the answer is yes. But uh, uh, if uh, I would like to know also in the other projects, and then we can elaborate uh, some section around it. Okay, I guess that might be a no. So Nick, uh, if, if you wish to uh, have a few seconds to elaborate on that, on the blockchain and how it will be used. Okay, so for uh, the So What project, um, we're, we're going to be doing a, 
um, I guess, a prototype um, connected to the tool around blockchain and distributed ledger technologies. Um, and so that will be trying to understand um, how we can actually um, trade energy um, between a, an industrial site or, or using an ESCO, um, but actually do that um, sort of in terms of the, the monetary transaction, um, how we actually do that through um, blockchain. Um, but, uh, you know, at the moment, that's it, it's a prototype, um, so that won't actually be part of the sort of commercial solution that gets released. Um, I think this is a, it's a really interesting area, but it's um, it's something that um, yeah it's probably uh, a number of years off actually releasing to the market yet. Um, but we hope to try and sort of prove the concept and, and actually um, yeah have a prototype simulation using blockchain um, sort of during so what. Okay, thank you very much. Now we are uh, past the the time we we hold. So I would uh, just like uh, to launch one last poll about uh, how and if you liked uh, the webinar. So please uh, give us uh, a feedback. This uh, has been uh, the first webinar, the first collaboration among uh, us, basically. Uh, it was not uh, extremely technical. This is uh, something uh, we decided to, just uh, to avoid uh, a four hour webinar, but uh, we plan to go more in deep in technical aspect and uh, hopefully boost uh, cooperation among uh, our project and uh, we wish that uh, you enjoyed the webinar uh, and you will follow other initiatives as said uh, we are more than open to discuss more in deep uh, our projects and uh, if so please contact us uh, you will uh, receive a follow-up email uh, with uh, the information about uh, this webinar and also the contact uh, our contacts and uh, we hope to have uh, another uh, webinar probably or a physical event uh, in the future about our project and uh, we hope to also present uh, more results uh, as uh, the project will be uh, more developed basically so uh, i would like to thank uh, you all the panelists and the audience for your time today and uh, well I can uh, share the result of uh, this uh, poll so it was uh, quite uh, successful I'm uh, glad of that and uh, thank you again for that and uh, yeah, stay healthy in this uh, difficult situation bye thank you bye bye Thank you. Bye, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. 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 Thank, thank you very you. much. Bye bye.